guest speaker is David Brody. He is the chief political correspondent for CBN News. Uh, David is based in Washington, but spends a great deal of his time traveling around the nation, speaking engagements at such places as Campbellsville University, uh, and uh, interviewing national newsmakers along the way. Uh, he has appeared on numerous TV public affairs shows such as CNN, Fox News, MSNBC. He has been a frequent uh, participant and uh, person interviewed on NBC's Meet the Press. Over dinner last night, uh, David and I had the opportunity to talk about the times that he was interviewed by the late Tim Russert, who I personally consider to be one of the all-time great uh, news interviewers and, and news journalists in our day and our time. He is an Emmy Award winning veteran news journalist who's interviewed many of the prominent national figures. He covered the Obama White House for three years. He has covered uh, the 2008 presidential election. He's covering the 2012 presidential cycle. He has done one-on-one -on -one interviews for, uh, with national and international leaders covering the uh, political spectrum all the way from uh, Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton to Sarah Palin, Mike Huckabee, Mitt Romney, Michael Steele, Tim Kaine, among many others. His p daily political blog, The Brody File, has been featured and carried in the New York Times, the LA Times, the Washington Post. He's covered a number of other stories during his career, the Virginia Tech massacre, the 2006 midterm elections, Hurricane Katrina and Rita, the Oklahoma City bombing, the 1996 Olympics. He's traveled to uh, numerous places and locations throughout the world. He has worked as news director at uh, various TV stations uh, in Colorado Springs as well as in Washington, D.C. He won an Emmy Award producing the top newscast in Colorado Springs in 1989. He's been with CBN since 2003. Raised in New York City, graduated from Ithaca College, married with three children. He is a professing evangelical Christian, and I think that will be very apparent as David Brody comes and shares from his heart this morning. Join me in welcoming David Brody. Thank you. Hello, everybody. How are, oh, I don't have to use this mic. How is everybody today? Good? Yes? 80? What is it going to be? 88 to today? It's, it's not like this, correct, all the time today in March in Kentucky, correct? Um, I, I want to start by talking a little bit about the fact that I'm a Jewish believer. Uh, I'm a, as, as we put labels on folks, I'm a Jew for Jesus, as they say. I hate labels. But people have put that label on me for sure. I like to think of myself as someone who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ and has a personal relationship with him. And we'll just leave it at that. We don't need to worry about labels because I know a lot of folks don't like labels. Uh, but I want to start out a little bit and tell you briefly about uh, my Jewish background and then exactly how I came to CBN. And then we have some video clips and I'm going to show you some of the newsmakers that I've interviewed, one of them with Donald Trump, which I think you guys will find uh, pretty fascinating. Um, let, let me start out by showing you a quick little picture, if I can get this to work. Let's see, there I am. I was actually bar mitzvahed. Uh, I don't know if you like the haircut. Uh, that would be 1978, by the way. Uh, but I, I was bar mitzvahed, and there was all of the traditions, the Haggadah, the Passover Seder, uh, Rosh Hashanah. We did it all, but I was going through the motions. I, I didn't understand what I was doing. We just wanted to eat dinner at Passover on page 34, and I passed over the gefilte fish, uh, but I did like the matzo ball soup, for sure. Uh, but, you know, at some point, I, I said to myself, you know, wait, wait a minute here. What, what's going on? Why are we doing what we're doing here at Passover? And my mom had no answers, and a lot of folks in my family had no answers. Well, in high school, I, I met my future wife, uh, that was in 1979, my goodness, believe it or not, uh, and we've been married now 23 years. Uh, her name is, here she is, let me see if I can get her up on the screen. Oh, hang on, let me go back for a mo moment here. <laughs> because I wanted to share a clip with you real quick of one of my favorite movies of all time, so have a look at this. Mm -hmm. 
I love that. Do, do we like this movie? Oh, yeah. Yes. Great movie. Um, but now let me talk about my wife real quick. Uh, <laughs> I put tradition before my wife. I don't know about that. Uh, but there she is. And I met her in 1979. Uh, we went to high school together. We went to college together. There we are in high school, once again. Quite a, quite a nice haircut. Um, and there we are in college. I don't know what it is with the suspenders. I, I, I don't know. Exactly. And what is that red shirt? Uh, but anyhow, we went to high school and college together, and she was the one that started talking to me about Jesus Christ. She had given her life to the Lord in 1983, her freshman year of college. Uh, and she started talking to me about God, and I said, look, I don't need God. I mean, I'm, I'm Jewish. You know, we, we have God. We're the chosen people. Well, why do I need any sort of personal relationship with God? Uh, but she started to explain the Bible to me, and I said, very nice, not necessarily interested. But she took me to a charismatic church in New York City. That's where I grew up, in New York. Uh, Times Square Church, may, maybe many of you have heard of it. Uh, David Wilkerson, the pastor, was there. Uh, and this was a, a, can you imagine, a charismatic church. Here I am, a Jew from New York City, walking into a charismatic church in New York that had tambourines going, the flags were waving, and I didn't know what to expect. And I just thought everybody was a little off the rocker. But it turns out, actually, that I listened to the sermons and what Pastor Wilkerson was saying at that time. So it was a long story, but after a couple of years, I, obviously the Lord was working on, on me. I didn't know that at the time, but he was clearly working on me. We decided to get married, my wife and I. Believe it or not, I was still Jewish at the time. And her brother said, don't do it, don't do it. And you know what? Biblically, they were giving her solid advice. They really were. Um, she was praying about it. She said that he's close, that he's close. Because it had been a couple years, and I was starting to say grace at meals, and there were a couple other signs. Well, so anyhow, we got married. And let me just show you real quick, um, if I could. There's a picture of our wedding. There's Obi -Kano uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi showed up <laughs> at our wedding. As you can see. I said, who is this guy? He was a layman from the church. But I, I really thought Obi-Wan Kenobi showed up at our wedding. Uh, but we got married. We moved to Colorado Springs. We, that was in New York where we got married. And in Colorado Springs, we went to a prayer meeting. And I met a man by the name of Lorenzo, a pastor there, Pastor Lorenzo. And this is where I gave my life to Christ. He talked to me about, he said, it's a long story, but he basically said to me, you're ready. And he goes, you know what you have to do. And it's funny he mentioned that because I knew about a week before that that I was just waiting, that there was a decision point that was coming, and I knew in my heart that Christ was calling. And indeed, he started to repeat our whole life history, my life history, back to me. He knew about me being Jewish for some reason. He asked, he said, you're Jewish, aren't you? He never met me before in my entire life. It was a surreal experience, quite frankly. So in Colorado Springs at a prayer meeting, I gave my life to Jesus Christ, Yeshua, as they say in, the, in, the, in, uh, in Hebrew. So there I was, and I had given my life to Christ. And then at that point, I said, you know, I feel more Jewish than I ever have before. I mean, Jesus was Jewish, right? I mean, and, and I, I, all of a sudden, the traditions came alive, and I understood why we were doing the things that we were doing. And of course, it's a process that I had to go through for a long time. And, you know, it's funny, I... I remember witnessing to my mom, but before I tell you about that, I want to show you the family reaction. I think I have a picture. There it is. Um, <laughs> when I gave my life to Christ, uh, this was the, the Jewish family reaction. And uh, that isn't really my mom. Uh, it's just a JPEG image. Um, but when I talk to my mom about Jesus today, I say, Mom, look, Jesus is Jewish. You, or Ju Jesus was, is, however you want to use it. Uh, Jesus is Jewish. And she goes, really? I thought he was Protestant. <laughs> so I guess my point is on that is that you, with, with Reformed Jews especially, because I have Orthodox uh, Jewish relatives, but with Reformed Jews, they really have a hard time even understanding uh, the Old Testament itself. I mean, they really go off of the Talmud, uh, which is the rabbinical teachings. And so, you know, when it comes to the Old Testament, I remember one time at Passover, I said, Mom, this year, instead of reading from the Haggadah, which we do every year, why don't we read from the Old Testament? I mean, you know, the story of the Exodus. I mean, and she goes, David, this is Passover. We don't read from the Old Testament. I'm like, okay. So they, she doesn't quite get it. 
but we're working on her. My stepsister has given her life to Christ, my Jewish stepsister, uh, and there's a couple other relatives that are really close. So if you can pray for my mom, her name is Annette Brody. So I would love if you could do that. Um, the bottom line is, is that after a long career, I finally came to CBN News, and I'm not going to bore you with all the details because we have a short amount of time here, but I started working for CBN, the Christian Broadcasting Network, in 2003, and God has been unbelievably amazing. He's given me opportunities uh, to really go out there and interview newsmakers, and, the, and what I really want to talk to you about a little bit is how he's integrated my faith with my work. And we can all do that, obviously, to a certain extent. In my case at CBN, it was really interesting. I've had a chance to interview newsmakers and talk to them about things that are evangelical in nature. And the mainstream media, praise God, has picked it up. Uh, have picked up a lot of the interviews. So I've interviewed presidential candidates like Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, Newt Gingrich, uh, Rick Santorum, Mitt Romney, people like that. And I want to play you a little clip, if I have it here. Uh, this is of Newt Gingrich. We have this here. Newt Gingrich, I was in Iowa, and this was about nine months ago. I was in Iowa, and Greta Van Susteren from Fox News was in the same room with me. She had just interviewed Newt Gingrich about all of his marital problems. And then I was about to go interview Newt, and I was going to ask him relatively some of the same questions, but here's the difference. The way I integrated my faith with my job is that I didn't ask it the way Greta Van Susteren asked it. You know, she asks it in a very prosecutorial way. Uh, for me, I, I asked him about God's forgiveness, God's grace in, in his marital, troubled marital history. And because of that, he gave me a much different response than he gave to Greta. And this clip actually made the Associated Press headlines because he was able to finally open up about his marriage for the first, or his failed marriages for the first time. So here is that clip. You know the question, and I'm not going to ask it the way everybody else will ask it, but, but as it relates to the past and, and some of those uh, personal issues that you've had, you, you've talked about how God is a forgiving God, and, and I'd like you to expand about, uh, upon that as you went through some of those difficulties, how you saw God's forgiving nature in, in all of that. Well, I mean, first of all, there's, there's no question that at times in my life, uh, partially driven by, by how passionately I felt about this country, uh, that I worked far too hard and that things happened in my life that were not appropriate. Uh, and, and what I can tell you is that when I did things that were wrong, I, I wasn't trapped in situation ethics. I was doing things that were wrong, and yet I was doing them. Um, I found that I was, felt compelled to seek God's forgiveness. Uh, not God's understanding, but God's forgiveness. And that I do believe in forgiving God. Uh, and, I, and I think most people, deep down in their hearts, hope there's a forgiving God. Uh, somebody once said that when we're young, we, are, we seek justice, but as we get older, we seek mercy. Uh, and there's something to that, I think. Um, I feel that, I mean, I'm now, you know, 67, uh, and I am a grandfather. I have two wonderful grandchildren. I have two uh, wonderful daughters and two great sons-in-law. Chris and I have a great marriage, and, and uh, uh, I think that I've learned an immense amount. And I do feel that God, in that sense, has given me, has blessed me with an opportunity as a person, forgetting all this political stuff, as a person, I've had the opportunity to have a wonderful life and to find myself now uh, truly enjoying 